All right, going to do a video showing that contrary to what these sinless perfection heretics claim, there is two natures in the life of a Christian, the saved Christian, the saved member of the Church of the Living God. See First Timothy chapter three, First Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen, is they have two natures. There's the spiritual nature, the nature that wants to live holy, and the flesh that wants to sin. And the sinless perfection heretics they deny that because they teach this false doctrine that, well, when Adam sinned, he only brought death upon mankind, but not actual sin, because they did not deny that the body of flesh is sinful, because they're self-righteous. They think they're holy before God, when really, Revelation 15, 4, is clear that God is the only one that is holy. We're not holy, and I've proved that in other videos, but I'm going to show you some clear scriptures showing the two natures in the life of a Christian. If you notice me blinking quite a lot, uh, I've recently been doing this, these eye exercises to help improve my eyesight, and it really does help because I've tried wearing some of these blue light canceling glasses, and they do help, but I find they do, they kind of hurt my eyes. Um, I just, I've just found that glasses hurt my eyes, and a lot of the comments on the video were saying the same thing. So I've been doing these eye exercises, and they really do help improve my eyesight. So just wanted to point that out if you notice me blinking quite a lot I'm just doing the because blinking helps wash your eyes it helps get the blood vessels in your eyes it really does help so just wanted to point that out but I'm going to show you some scriptures showing that uh, Christians do have two natures there's the spiritual nature and the fleshly nature so I'm going to get right into that 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 12 to 16 So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus shall raise us up, us up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all these things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which we cause we faint not, neither through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Uh, that's the end of the scripture right there. So, what do you have there? Well, you have the outward man, the, you know, the body, you know, the body of flesh, the inward man, you know, it's renewed day by day, the inward man. You have your fleshly nature. You know, it, it's a constant process of sanctification. Salvation happens in the moment, and one in the moment you get saved, it's a, it's a one-time event. But the sanctification is a lifetime process. That's what I was talking about here: sanctification. The inward man is renewed day by day. The outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day. It's sanctification. You have two natures there. You have the outward man. It's constantly having to be renewed day by day. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 23. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, then ye are not under the law. For the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, unclean, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, uh, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay? Crystal clear. The flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. Your flesh is, is unregenerate. I showed in the other video about how our bodies are corrupt. Our bodies of flesh will not be redeemed until the rapture. You read about that in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 42 to 44 and verses... Uh, 51 to 54. Our bodies right now are sinful. Anyone who says that they're sinlessly perfect, you know, ask them this question. Do you experience physical pain? Do you get tired at night? Do you have to go to sleep? If so, then you're not sinlessly perfect. Your body is so corrupt. You know, the reason why you have to go to the washroom, the reason why you have to go to sleep, the reason why you get headaches, the reason why you can get sick, the reason why you can, you know, you bump your head and it gets hurt, the reason why you can stub your toe and it hurts, is because you have a body of flesh. You have a body of sin. So if, if these sinless perfectionists answer, yes, I do get hurt, then they're not sinlessly perfect. 
if they're sinlessly perfect, they shouldn't even be dying of old age. They should, in fact, if, if we could be sinlessly perfect, there should be people from 200, 300 years ago who are still alive today because they've maintained this sinless state. But it's not because our bodies are not sinlessly perfect. We experience physical death because we have a body of sin. We have two natures, the fleshly nature and the, sinful, and the, and the spiritual nature, and they're contrary one to another. It's crystal clear. But these self-righteous, sinless perfection heretics can't handle that. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 10. Turn there. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they which are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So, so, so if so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay? Again, crystal clear, the body is dead because of sin. The carnal mind is enmity with God, but your spirit is life. The soul and spirit is redeemed, but the flesh is still corruptible. You have two natures. Romans chapter 7, verses 14 and 25. This is a scripture that the sinless perfection heretics try to say, oh, that was before Paul got saved. Um, we're going to read it, and we're going to see that it is not before his salvation. He's talking about his current struggles with the flesh. But again, the sinless perfection heretics have to do anything they can to back up their self-righteousness and their thinking that they're holy before God. You know, you read Job chapter 4, verse 17. You know, it talks about, you know, you think you're pure, you think you're more pure than God. You know, it's condemning that, but they can't handle that. All right, just had a few technical difficulties there. Uh, something went wrong with the recorder. But yeah, I was in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 to 25. So let's get right into reading that. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that, I, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Uh, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh, for I know that is in me, that, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, and how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good uh, that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do it, if, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh, I find then a law uh, that when I do good, evil is present with me. Uh, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Christ Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Okay? And they'll say, see, this is before he got saved. Um, read verse 25. You know, I myself serve the law of God. You can't do that as a lost person. You cannot serve the law of God as a lost person. And again, look at the passage there. You know, a wretched man that I am, present tense. Uh, where is it? What else did he say there? You know, uh, he talks about how, you know, verse 14, I am carnal, present tense. It's always present tense, not past tense at all. Twisting what the verse is saying there. But you clearly see he's talking about how his he wants to live holy, but the flesh is causing him to sin. He still struggled with sin after salvation. He had to he had he had the uh, physical nature, the fleshly nature, and the spiritual nature. Very, very clearly there. Turn to Ephesians chapter four, verses seventeen to twenty four. And I apologize, I'm, not, I'm just not good at reading on a computer. Again, the eye exercises do help, but just in general, reading on a computer, it's just, I'm not good at it. I read better stuff off a computer, like physical paper books, but my printer's not working, so. And I haven't been able to get ink because of the stupid lockdown and the pandemic and everything. It's ridiculous. But Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. This I say, therefore, testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not 
as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not have not so learned Christ. So yeah, be ye that ye yeah, that so be ye that so if so if so be that ye heard have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off the former conversation, the old man, uh, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you have the old man, you got to put him off and put on the new man. You have to resist the flesh and walk according to the spirit. And again, you know, reading, I'm just not good at reading on a computer. Um, it's really just not my my expertise uh in even reading articles too it's just i can't i just can't do it um i thought it would be blue like i thought blue like glasses would help but they didn't so just wanted to point that out but yeah put on the old man put on the new man the inward man the outward man there's two natures there you clearly see it there now finally turn to colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 11. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, uh, con conspe conspience, hope I'm saying that word right, uh, concupience, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked in some time uh, when ye lived in them. But now you put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. For there is neither Jew, neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay, so that's, that's the final scripture I'd read there. So you have two natures, you have the old man and the new man. And the body of flesh, like I showed in the other video, the body of flesh does not get redeemed till the rapture. You read about that in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 42 to 44 and verses 51 to 54. We have a body of sin. If you're saved, you have a body of sin. You have two natures. And the sinless perfection heretics can't stand that. They, they, they hate that doctrine because it kicks their self-righteous pride. It kicks them thinking that they're a good person. Even though Isaiah chapter forty six verse six says that there's none, you know, all our righteousness are all our righteousness are filthy rags. But what are these sinless perfection heretics doing? They're trying to establish their own righteousness and not submit to the righteousness of God, like it talks about in Romans ten three. So don't be deceived by the sinless perfection liars. Christians have two natures, the spiritual and the carnal. Very clearly taught in these scriptures there. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.